everyone. This is Nico from BMW Blog, and I'm here to tell you about paddle shifters. Now, paddle shifters have been around for the nine, since the 90s, a um, long time. Uh, but there are still a lot of BMW customers who are new to the brand and new to performance cars and don't really quite understand how to use them. So, if that's you and you'd like to know how to use them, well then this video is perfect for you. Here I am sat in the new BMW X3 M40i LCI facelift. It's the newest version of the X3 M40i and it is an M performance car, meaning it is like a halfway point between a regular BMW and a full-on M car. Because of that, uh, we have a big straight six engine under the hood, making 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. That engine is mated to an eight-speed automatic. It's standard on this car. It's the only transmission option you can get. Now, because it is a performance car, it has these little paddle shifters here on the steering wheel. Now, these are designed to help you shift gears manually. Now, there are a few ways you can do that, actually. It's not, you know, just as simple as, you know, sh shift manually with these. There are uh, s some little interesting things to know. So, I'm going to quickly walk you through how it works, and then I'm going to demonstrate them. So, how do they work? Well, they're very simple. Extremely simple, actually. There are two paddles, a left one and a right one. On the left one, there's a little minus symbol. On the right one, there's a little plus symbol, both of which are attached to the steering wheel uh, itself. So as you turn the steering wheel, they turn with it. Uh, and they remain in the same position on the steering wheel, obviously, um, and they are right here at nine and three uh, on the steering wheel. So they're nice and easy for your fingers to reach if your hands are at nine and three, which is where they should be anyway. Now, if I pull, if I, well, I say pull, it's just a little click. I don't know if you can hear that or notice that, but it's just a little click. If I click the right paddle, that is to shift up. That will shift up one gear. If I pull the left paddle, that shifts down one gear. Um, you can do multiple quickly, but for the most part, it's just one, one, one. You know, always one gear. Now, you can use them in a couple of different ways. While you're driving, you can just, you know, hit, you know, say you, you want to overtake someone and you're just driving in normal mode, you can just click the downshift paddle a couple of times and that will downshift a few gears or however many you want. It won't let you over rev it, so don't worry about shifting down too low. It won't uh, shift too low. It just won't let you. So you don't have to worry about that. Just shift down a couple of gears, overtake, and then let the car take over again on its own and it will shift automatically again on its own. Or, while you're in gate, while you're in drive, I'll put it in drive right now. You can click the shift lever over to the left, and that engages the manual or sport mode. Now, if you just do that, it's sport mode, and what that does is it's well, it's sport mode for the transmission. It tells the transmission to hold on to gears a little bit longer, um, to downshift more eagerly. It just makes it drive a little bit sportier um, for more performance-oriented driving. However, while you're in that mode, all you have to do is touch any one of the paddles. Just click one of the paddles, down or up, it doesn't matter, um, and you will engage manual mode. Now, you'll know that because, let's go back a little bit. When you're in normal mode and you're in just regular drive, there's a little D down on your screen for drive, right, to tell you that you're in drive. When you click it over to the left, it says S1 for sport mode and first gear. And then, you know, the, obviously the gear number will change. Now, if I click either one of the paddles, up or down, that S turns into an M for manual. So it's manual mode. Now, in manual mode, it will not revert back to automatic. So it will stay in manual mode all the time. And that's important because it's an important distinction to make because some people like to just keep it in D and use you know the paddles to maybe do a quick overtake or something like that and then let it just you know, leave it to its own devices after that and let it shift on its own. When you're in manual mode, you have to shift. You know, it's not going to shift for you. Uh, it's not going to go back into automatic mode. It won't shift for you. So you have to stay man. You have to shift manually unless you just click it back over to the right. Now you're back in D and it's just a normal automatic again. So that's how it works. It's very simple. I'm going to go take it out on the road and show you actually how it works while driving. So now I'm in manual mode and it's not going to shift. So I have to shift up. Now I'm into second. Just one right click or one click of the right paddle and I'm up into second gear. Now interestingly, 
I don't have to shift back down into first. When I come to a stop, as I just have, it automatically shifts down into first gear once you come to a stop. It will do that for you, so you don't have to do that, and if you forget to shift down, uh, you're not gonna be stuck at a stoplight in fifth gear, and you're not gonna be able to you know, take off normally. So that's why it does that for you. It's also important to note that this is independent of any drive mode. So I'm in sport mode now, like I have my, um, my drive select in sport mode, uh, which you know makes this engine, uh, s suspension, the steering, and all that stuff a little bit sportier, but you don't have to be. To use manual mode uh, for the transmission, um, you can manually shift gears in any of the drive select modes. So if you like your car more comfortable, you know, a little more relaxed, you can keep it in comfort mode and still shift your gears manually. So I'm gonna start off again in first gear. See the revs climb. All the way to red line doesn't shift up for you. So that's important, a lot of cars won't do that. So we're just kind of cruising, you don't have to be driving in hard to shift manually. If you just like shifting gears yourself, you can do it all the time. You don't have to be driving hard, or sporty, or any sort of sport mode, you can just drive. So, now I downshifted once, twice, to make this turn, I'm in first gear now, okay? Shift it up into second gear. Now I can stay in second gear here, this is a pretty low speed turn, but I can stay in second gear. Now, I can rev it all the way out if I want, and then click, shift, punch it, shift. Now what's nice is the shifts in this are very, very quick. They're very, very snappy. Um, not a lot of automatics are that snappy on upshifts. BMW's transmission calibration is outstanding in this car. Actually, in any car. But uh, we're in this one, so this is the example. It's outstanding. Now, if I want to downshift to get more power, I just click down. And then upshift again. Nice and easy. It really takes all of the difficulty out of shifting gears, uh, as, like with a manual transmission. Now, I know a lot of enthusiasts, myself included, enjoy that extra work of a manual transmission and prefer it to uh, you know a paddle shift gearbox like this however if you either don't know how to drive a manual transmission or you just can't be bothered to drive a manual transmission because they can be you know tiresome in day-to-day -day life um, you know this is a nice middle ground so that is how you use the paddle shifters in any modern bmw